Blitz on to Game of the Week is sponsored by Bojangles. Oh, it's that time, the Blitz on 2. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Mark Morgan. Let's all take a deep breath. We are here every Friday night at this time, taking you around the low country, bringing you the best high school football action as only we can. And we begin with our Game of the Week, Carolina Forest taking on Fort Dorchester. Let's check out these highlights. We know Fort D is pretty good. Here they are kind of coming off the bus. Carolina Forest, second play from scrimmage. Look at that. That's a nice play right there. Nice touchdown. Zoltan Osborne, by the way, to Demetrius McKelvey. 7 0 Patriots on that later in the first. JD Geddes in the jumbo package. Rumbles in. Two yards out. 14 0 Fort D. Patriots off and running second quarter. Carolina Forest would claw back in this. Zion Reynolds from a yard out gives Fort D some breathing room, though. 21 6. Another Reynolds TD would make it 28 6. Carolina Forest scores right before the half. Khalil Johnson on the end around. That makes it 21-13, but your final, and this is very impressive. Fort Dorchester walks away with the win, 58-26. A very, very impressive performance. And News 2's Dan Fanning will always cover our Game of the Week here on the Blitz on 2. And Dan joins us now live from Fort Dorchester. Jan Dan, as I just said, a very, very impressive performance by the Patriots, huh? Mark, that is right. Uh, Fort D just turned the lights off on us a little while ago, but man, did they turn the lights off on Carolina Forest this evening. All in all, a pretty emphatic victory. Carolina Forest didn't allow, excuse me, Fort Dorchester did not punt until eight minutes left in the ball game. They scored on just about every drive in the contest except for the last one with about 15 seconds left in the first half. Zoltan Osborne looked impressive, the junior signal caller, but all in all, a very emphatic win for Fort Dorchester. Coach Steve LaPrade and Osborne talk about their team's performance after the victory. Oh, we did good. You know, we made, made a lot of mental mistakes on defense penalty wise, but First game, I, I was proud of them. I thought they played hard. That's a great opponent over there. They got a heck of a program, Carolina Forest. So I'm obviously happy uh, with the way we played. Thought we did a good job. It was great. You know, we really gelled together. We really only got stopped one time on offense, so that was great. We was really just moving the ball. Great as a team. Great teamwork. Everybody just gelling together. It was great, to be honest. And fingers crossed that we get through the week unscathed here for Fort Dorchester. If we do, shapes up to be a dandy of a ball game next week. Dorman, they come to town, a rematch for the 2015 state title game that just so happens Fort Dorchester won. Mark, I'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, Dan, I think Zoltan described that game and his team's performance very, very well. He used the word great, I think, like four times, but he's right. Dan, thank you so much. We'll see Dan Fanning again a little later in the show. All right, let's span the low country, shall we? We head now to Mount Pleasant. Wando hosting James Island. I was out there uh, earlier tonight. We take a trip to the new Wando Stadium. What a beautiful facility. Warriors bursting through the charge to take the field and they go on top early. Watch this play. Quarterback Devon Yard going up top to wide receiver Des Loring coming right at you, right into your living room. Loring gathers it in 60 yards later. Touchdown Wando. The PAT was no good. Six nothing home team. Tough sledding for James Island. No room right here up the middle for Tino McKelvey on this short run. Trojans just couldn't get it going offensively there in that first half. Later first quarter, Wando gets on the board again. Tanner Duncan, a nifty 37-yard field goal. You don't see field goals of that distance very often in high school. And Wando pulls away to win it. Your final over here in uh, Mount Pleasant is 25-9. Wando, a winner. Let's check out Bishop England and Ashley Ridge. The Swamp Fox is at home for this one. B.E. with the onside kick to start the game. What about that? And it works. The Bishops recover. They think they got it, and we're waiting for the signal, and we still, well, they had it anyway. Later, later in the first quarter, Ashley River with it. Uh, nice screen pass to Chris Simmons for a decent gain. Simmons turned out to be a real kind of a workhorse there for Ashley Ridge. This guy doing some work. Here he is on the end around. Nicely done there. Then number 14, Dwayne Simmons will get into the act. Watch this nice reception over the middle. Drags a couple tacklers with him for a 10 yard game. Three bishops then uh, trying to move the ball with a screen pass. Really tough going for them offensively as well. This one really back and forth, back and forth with not a lot of scoring. Chris Simmons has it right here for Ashley Ridge trying to make something happen. He fumbles, BE recovers. That's the kind of game it was. Both teams with miscues, kind of sloppy. Final score, Ashley Ridge over Bishop England. Your final is 20 to three. 
The Iron Horses of Philip Simmons looking uh, strong on opening night. Waccamaw in town. LaRon Davis for the home team with a nice run right there. And again, Iron Horse is really good this season thus far. Tristan Skipper, the Philip Simmons uh, quarterback on the keeper. He rambles all the way inside the five before he's finally brought down. And then coming right at you, LaRon Davis gets the handoff. He hits pay dirt. Touchdown, Iron Horses. This one really got out of hand early. As we go to the scoreboard, Philip Simmons, a winner over Waccamaw, 36 to 14. Impressive performance by the Iron Horses. All right, we're just getting started here on the Blitz on two after this brief timeout. Highlights from six more games heading your way. Stay with us. Okay, welcome back to the Blitz on two, everybody. I'm Mark Morgan. So glad you continue to be with us. Let's dive back into the highlights on a busy Friday night. We'll do uh, St. John's at home against Timberland. Let's check out the highlights from this one again. Timberland opening drive here. As you see, the two teams are just kind of going out shaking hands. We always love to say to show you that Kylan Brown with a nice run right there. Look at him dragging tacklers before he is finally brought down and later uh, Kylan Brown will make another nice run. There he is scoring a touchdown. So uh, Timberland looking really good right there. St. John's trying to go, go downfield right here. Josh Brown uh, hands it off for a nice run right there. Crazy playoff for St. John's coming up right here. Look at this. The pass, it's bobbled. He breaks a couple tackles, and then he scores. So nice hand-eye coordination there for the touchdown. That was Jordan Brown to Jaden Morrison. Very nicely done. A few plays later, the bad snap right there to a quarterback. He's uh, Brown, and he's scrambling to find an open man. He's still looking. There's a mistake right there. So again, this game, much like many of the other ones uh, on this Friday night, kind of a back and forth, back and forth uh, between these two teams. Some miscues. Let's go to the final score. Timberland, a winner over St. John's. Your final there was 30 to 12. The Blitz on two rolls on. Next up, Military Magnet paying a visit to North Charleston. We check out the highlights from this one. When we pick it up, North Charleston punting. Watch this nice return by Jaquavion Smith. A nifty run, couple bounces, right? You got to judge that. You got to gauge it. Are the tacklers going to get there? But he does a nice job, breaks a couple tackles. Smith, very nice. Now, a few plays later, he's looking for an open man. Rolls out, goes up top. Where is Christian White? He is right there. Hauls it in, breaks the plane. Even I can see that's a touchdown. Eagles nicely done. Cougars, though, answer back. This one coming right at you. Deshaun Williams fights his way into the end zone. Dragon, guys, he will not be denied. Touchdown, North Charleston. To the scoreboard we go. Final score, North Charleston easy over Military Magnet, 42-6. to six. Let's head now to Johnson Haygood Stadium. Burke hosting Porter Goud. We pick it up with the Cyclones on the move in the first quarter. Nice, nice, nice opening uh, shot there. <laughs> Let's watch uh, Freeman Barber will go for a nice run uh, for Porter Goud before the defense. Uh, actually, we've got a lot of pregame stuff. I mean, they're shaking hands. They're doing all kinds of stuff. There is uh, Barber right there with a nice run. Kind of foggy there, apparently, also there at Johnson Haygood Stadium. We're going to go ahead and go to the scoreboard on this one to check out the final Porter Goud, an easy winner, 46-22 to over Burke. It's Academic Magnet visiting Pinewood Prep early second quarter. Quarterback TJ Hatchett to Terrence Stallworth. Where is Terrence? There he is. Nice game for the Panthers. Later in the drive, Hatchett again. This time he's looking for Troy Dandridge, who picks up the first down. The Panthers will finish the drive later with Hatchett, who else, slinging it to Will Ruddy for an additional six points. And we go, there we go, right in your living room, the final 43-7 Pinewood Prep over Academic Magnet. Now, Somerville hit the road to face Gaffney. Let's look at some highlights from this one. Uh, this was a tough matchup. Remember, Somerville had to change. Westside was out due to COVID, so they traveled to Gaffney. Tyler Smith, a real workhorse for Gaffney in this one. That's Smith scoring a touchdown right there. And here he is again, taking another handoff and scoring another touchdown. Tim McGill will come up with an interception for Gaffney right here. Gaffney very good on the defensive end as well. Then Ken Littlejohn will come up with a nice play for the home team as well. Number 11, that's a touchdown. This was really a route early on, but we do want to show you one very serious play towards the end of this game. There's Somerville for a short game. Kamari Hare of Somerville was taken off the field on a stretcher. You'll see that here in just a couple moments. And he did have movement. Oh, it is reported to us movement in his extremities when he was taken off on an ambulance. No other update on his condition, but it appeared to be fairly good news given the situation. So again, the final there as far as the football game is concerned, Somerville loses to Gaffney 
35 to 7. A couple other quick scores. Final score between Oceanside and Collegiate Academy. Uh, excuse me, between uh, Gray Collegiate, 33 22 Gray Collegiate, a winner there. Also, uh, Kane Bay beat Orangeburg Wilkinson by a score of 42 to 14. And Blythewood and Goose Creek also won to report Blythewood 22 7 over the Gators in that one. All right, when we come back, we'll go live to Dan Fanning for a recap and analysis of our game of the week. Don't go away. Welcome back, everybody. We return to Fort Dorchester now to chat with our own Dan Fanning. Dan, the Patriots uh, tonight of Fort D just really ran Carolina Forest off the field. What impressed you the most, man? Well, I got this, they kind of set the tone early. You know, second play from scrimmage. They got the fumble, then scored a couple plays later. So didn't let off the gas after that. Carolina Forest scored right before halftime, but coming back out of half. Fort Dorchester marched right down the field and scored yet again and never let up from there. So Fort Dorchester, very impressive. We'll see what kind of carryover goes into next week, what kind of momentum they could take against a very good Dorman team. Again, Dorman played Fort Dorchester back in 2015. I was there in Columbia with News 2, and Fort Dorchester came away with the victory. So we'll see if they can do it again next week. Zoltan Osborne, the junior signal caller, very impressive. So was the defensive line for Fort Dorchester. So we'll see what next week has in store, but from a very dark Bagwell Stadium. Mark, back to you in the studio. All right, Dan, uh, thanks very much. Uh, really appreciate that a lot. Again, Dan Fanning will be with us every week. He's with us during the week, too, but he'll be here every Friday night on Blitz on 2, uh, and he will be live covering the game of the week, which tonight was, as we said, a very impressive win by Fort Dorchester over Carolina Forest. Real quick thank yous, folks. Uh, I want to thank everybody, obviously, for uh, being with us. Producer Morgan Lowers, uh, Gerard Capers, our outstanding uh, director as well, all the great photographers here at News 2. I'm Mark Morgan. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you right here 11 p.m. next Friday, okay?